here they'll kind of lead you to some interesting little town. First off, the milestone, I'm not sure if you're aware of it or you're told, but passing a thousand runs in T20Is tonight for Scotland, only third player to do it after Richard Barrington and Kyle Pitzer. What does it mean to you to accomplish that feat in a victory like you did tonight? Uh, yeah, I think I think the victory is ultimately going to be more important than passing a thousand runs. Um, they're always nice little milestones to tick off, um, and just to try and chase Richie and, and Kyle will be a nice little battle for the next few years. Um, but it was probably, like I said, it's more important to do it in that victory tonight, um, to set that up and and give the bowlers something to to work with for for one of the first times in this tournament. It's probably probably a good sign going into the later stages, hopefully. You had been out beyond the, the first things that you played in Singapore in the tournament. You looked really scratchy at times in the subsequent uh, matches, from my perspective anyway. <laughs> but here you looked way, way more fluent tonight. How much did playing at night and not having to deal with the heat, uh, was that of a factor in terms of your comfort level at the crease tonight, regardless of the way the pitch was playing? Well, I don't think it was ever in long enough to for the heat to affect me. Um, I think I think I think the biggest change certainly I, I I took from the Namibia game was more the intent of how I wanted to go about my innings, um, whether it was at night or whether it was during the day. I thought I was probably a touch timid in the, in those two games. I think you're right, scratchy or or not quite using my my skills that that can put the bowler under pressure. Um, so after the Namibian game, Kyle and I sat and we had, we had quite a good conversation about just trying to get those skills out there and trying to use them. And um, certainly when I when I start like that, I, I seem to play better. So it's it's probably quite an important innings uh, mentally for me to take forward and to, to keep ticking off that sort of thing in 2020. Did coming down one spot lower at number four with all here is coming in at number three, did that believe alleviate some of the pressure that you were feeling and give you a bit more time? Um, oh, well, it, it helps when he strikes the ball as clean as he did and he took a bit of pressure off his all to, to finish the power play and get out of that quite well. Um, but it's 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 a role that we've used um, since since we've started this T20 campaign. We've we've tried to be as flexible as possible in the batting lineup um, and just trying to use the best players in the right spot. Um, and Ollie obviously came in and struck it well and and with the way Munns was obviously playing an unlike Munsey innings, um, I felt it was definitely up to me to to start with that intent. You and Richie Barrington, historically, you've had some incredible partnerships over the course of your careers together with Scotland, some record setting things and some crucial stands. I talked to Richie about this in a previous match where you, you guys put together a, a crucial partnership in this tournament. And again, another 50 plus stand tonight to see you guys through to the end of games and those 73 runs. I asked him, and I'll ask you the same question, what is it about the two of you and the comfort level that you have with each other, having played together so long, that allows you to complement each other so well to perform, not just individually, but in partnership to produce so many 50 and 100 plus games for Scotland, regardless of the moment? Yeah, I, th I, th I think you've hit, almost hit the nail on the head, the amount we've played together. Um, we can discuss options out there, and, and he can he can suggest what he thinks the best shot for me to play is or what he thinks the bowler might be doing and how I might be able to to counter that. And and it goes the same way. If he comes to me with an option that he wants to take down, um, then if we want to discuss it, then then we might say it is the best option or it's not the best option and, and we've worked like that. So I think playing as many games and just knowing, knowing the skills he's got um, and the way he the way he strikes the ball helps me because he can hit the ball. He hits the ball out of the park for fun. So being at the other end, knowing that you've got that power, that if you get a single, then it's not the end of the world because you know Richie might just smack it out of the park. Um, I think that that's always a nice place to be in, and I think that's starting to filter through the whole team that we we've been together now. So we we can discuss quite openly. The best way for us to go, and it can be, it be, be honest. If in these times where I've said things, and Richie has just turned around and said he doesn't think it's the best option, and and I'll trust him. I'll trust him if he if he says that, then he obviously feels strongly enough about it, and it, it seems to work. Hi, mate. Well played today. Thank you. Word on the pitch, Alex. It's pretty open looking. Certainly, at the minute, the whole square's been 
pretty brown and it doesn't it hasn't looked great since the warm up. So how how does it play? Does it look like it played pretty well? Yeah, I thought, I thought it played really well. Um, we're a little bit unsure how it's going to play because you're right, it's got the slight, um, slight bare patches on it, but to be honest, it felt like it, it skidded on quite nicely. It didn't offer much spin, um, which is probably been a, a factor out here. Um, the academies tended to be a little bit slower. Um, but it, it looked a good cricket wicket. I think that their openers started quite well and um, they put uh, they put Kyle and George under pressure so it, it seemed to be a good enough wicket to have a little bit in for both for both bat and ball. And how much of a factor did that sort of boundary play? Did you guys come out here and target that quite from the um, I think it was it was probably more a, a factor of having a right and left hander in the, the majority of the innings um, so it probably it probably looked like they were targeting that a little bit more um, and obviously, one side's humongous, so the, the, having that partnership of of the right and left hander it always meant somebody was hitting at it. Um, so whether that was tactics or just luck of the way it was, it was probably a little bit of both. And just to finish, you guys at times throughout this haven't quite hit the straps just yet. Does it feel like you're clicking just at the right time going into the, the next stage? Uh, you, you, you'd hope so. Um, we know how dangerous a team we can be. We know we're a 200 plus team. Um, so it's, you don't want to, you don't want to say you're definitely hitting the straps to come up against the Dutch and, and fall short. But we know that we've got, we've got match winners with, with both the bat and the ball. The two left arm spinners are, are starting to, they just impress me every time the ball, um, the pair of them, they're both young, they're both improving. Um, and, for Hamza to bowl a wicket maiden, and I think it was the twelfth or thirteenth over today. I'm not, I'm not sure I've seen that before, and it and it was it's just it's, it's just pleasing to see to see guys coming out and using their skills and, and being consistent. So we know if we, as a batting unit, if we can put a score in the door, then then we've got the bowlers to to defend it. Just one more question about the pace of the wicket. Historically. Your trademark shot is sweeping, sweeping spinners. You scored an awful lot of boundaries tonight, running the ball off the open face through third man. What did you see in the pitch that allowed you to make that such a frequent scoring option? Um, I don't think that it was. That was more more the field set. Um, that was probably a prime example of not trying to target the big boundary. Um, when Leverock came back, I felt he was going to try and use the wicket and try and make his hit to the big side. Um, so I thought if I could use use a, a little bit more of a touch touch game to get it past short of forty five or or point, then it felt more of a boundary option. Um, so I don't think that was necessarily so much the pitch as as just a as a plan to for the best boundary option.